Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Chuck Schumer thinks rules don't apply to him on flight. Immediately gets taught huge lesson. I hope you are sitting down because it appears that Senator Chuck Schumer, NYD, has once again demonstrated his hypocrisy, demonstrating by actions and words that he will and continues to take positions, not out of any sort of principled conviction, but because he believes they will grant him political gain. Schumer has been an outspoken and vocal critic of President Donald Trump, as he has hammered the president on alleged ties to Russia and the election hacking scandal. Never one to suffer fools, President Trump also routinely calls Schumer out publicly via Twitter as he is prone to do. In March 2017, President Trump called for an immediate investigation into Schumer due to his ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin, calling him a hypocrite due to a picture of Putin and Schumer surfaced from 2003 published in the Associated Press. Schumer is currently responding to the recent political stunt pulled by Deputy AG Rod Rosenstein and Special Counsel Robert Mueller, with regard to the 12 indicted Russian intelligence operatives. Schumer demands that President Trump demand that President Putin hand over the 12 Russians in question. Yet there are significant questions regarding the indictment as investigative journalist Paul Sperry notes, another strange Russia indictment by Mueller, no arrests, no American co-conspirators, no seizure of servers or property, no raids and no sourcing no informants or witnesses named, nothing attributed to intercepts. In fact, none of the findings is attributed not even to an FBI agent. He continued. Did Mueller leave out the sourcing for his evidence in Russia hacking indictment because it's merely CrowdStrike, the Democrat cybersecurity shop? Did CrowdStrike supplement the forensics in the absence of the DNC server FBI and Mueller never sees so Quantico could examine it? Schumer has also launched a campaign to block the nomination of President Trump's most recent Supreme Court appointment Brett Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh has been chosen to take the place of retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. Schumer tweeted his opposition just after the announcement of Kavanaugh's appointment had been made, stating, I will oppose Judge Kavanaugh's nomination with everything I have, and I hope a bipartisan majority will do the same. The stakes are simply too high for anything less. Yet during the prior administration, Schumer spoke out against what he termed as obstructionist behavior of Republican senators' plans to filibuster former President Barack Obama's Supreme Court pick to replace deceased Justice Antonin Scalia. Speaking to ABC's This Week, Schumer stated virtually the opposite of what he is stating regarding the confirmation of Kavanaugh. Schumer stated, Well, the job, first and foremost, is for the president to nominate and for the Senate to hold hearings and go through the process. You know, the Constitution, Ted Cruz holds the Constitution, you know, when he walks through the halls of Congress. Let him show me the clause that says president's only president for three years, here, he doesn't even know who the president's going to propose and he said, no, we're not having hearings, we're not going to go forward to lead the Supreme Court vacant at 300 days in a divided time, this kind of obstructionism isn't going to last. And you know, we Democrats didn't do this. When in the, we nominated, we voted 97 to 0 for Justice Kennedy in the last year of Reagan's term. For the record, Schumer's last statement is highly misleading in that the only reason Kennedy was nominated in the last year of Reagan's term was that Senate Democrats blocked and voted down his first two choices the year prior. Schumer also took a similar stance to his current stance on Kavanaugh nine years ago. At that time, he went out of his way to make sure the George W. Bush administration knew of his plans to filibuster any Supreme Court nominee they put forth of the next two years because the ideologies of the prior nominees did not align with his own. In a speech given on July 27, 2007, Schumer stated, We should not confirm any Bush nominee to the Supreme Court except in extraordinary circumstances. They must prove by actions not words that they are in the mainstream rather than we have to prove that they are not. Apparently, Schumer objected to a 300-day delay in appointing a justice, was perfectly fine filibustering a Supreme Court nominee for 543 days? Yet, not only is Schumer a hypocrite, he also believes the rules simply do not apply to him. Schumer was flying with his political protege, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand on a U.S. Airways flight from LaGuardia Airport to Washington. Both Schumer and Gillibrand were talking on their cell phones while the plane was boarding and continued to do even after the plane's captain made the announcement for passengers to turn them off. The two senators simply ignored the announcement and continued to talk on their phones. This prompted a flight attendant to politely ask the two senators to simply follow the Federal Aviation Administration rules and simply turn their phones off as all the other passengers on the plane had already done. According to a House Republican aide who was also on the flight and seated nearby, Schumer demanded to finish his call. 
the flight attendant told him no because the entire plane was waiting on him to shut his phone off in accordance with FAA regulations so they could take off. He was holding up the entire flight. Schumer then ended the call, but promptly began to rage at the flight attendant proclaiming he was entitled to continue his phone conversation until the cabin door was closed. The A then responded to Schumer's ridiculous antics, stating, she said she doesn't make the rules, she just followed them. As she walked away, Schumer was heard muttering, bitch. Rather than being embarrassed for Schumer's sanctimonious and pretentious outburst, Gillibrand attempted to cover for Schumer. She initially claimed the senior senator was polite and that he turned off his phone when asked to. Once the story of the true version of events was made public, circulating the news, Gillibrand's office made a second statement with a correction. Brian Fallon, a spokesman for Schumer, said later that, T. He senator made an off-the-cuff comment under his breath that he shouldn't have made, and he regrets it. Gillibrand's aide, Glenn Kaplan, said, Chuck did the right thing by apologizing. The flight attendant accepted his apology but also stated Schumer has a reputation that precedes him, he is not nice. After the incident Schumer was very critical and extremely vocal, condemning Republicans for trying to score cheap political points from the incident. Yet is evidenced by Schumer's own words and actions that this seems to be his issue, not that of a flight attendant, or Supreme Court justice nominee, the Russians, or President Trump. Schumer is too busy playing political games and pandering to this or that special interest group, as well as adding commas and zeros to his own personal bank accounts than he is in effectively serving the people that elected him to Washington. Schumer, your hypocrisy is showing again, you might want to tuck that back in. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.